Hello everyone and welcome to a very special video on Newcastle Fans TV. A few weeks ago, as you've seen, Lee set me up on a surprise video call with Newcastle midfielder Matt Ritchie. Now it's time for me to return the favour. Since the Matt Ritchie video, I've been working behind the scenes to set Lee up with his hero, Les Ferdinand. And after weeks and weeks of trying um, to get into contact, to find a contact for Les, I hit brick wall after dead end. Luckily, our very own Rob Spiral came through with flying colours, got a contact for Sir Les, and I made the arrangements. He kindly agreed to take part in what would be the surprise of a lifetime for Mr Lawler. It was the least we could do as a group for Lee as he is the driving force behind Newcastle Fans TV. He has been working full time during this whole pandemic since uh, during lockdown and he's still been finding the time to edit all of these videos of the fantastic interviews and fantastic guests we've had during this period. So the scene was set. Originally Les was supposed to appear on the Black and White Show live. However, let's face it, he's a busy guy. He's still sporting director at Queen's Park Rangers where, you know, they've got Project Restart and everything's just kicking back into gear there. Luckily, however, a few minutes after we went off air, I got the message off Les saying he was free. So I set up a stream to record. Here it is. Hola, how are you? Wow, Les, you are like my hero as a kid. <laughs> oh, I am, mate. You okay? I am just, I'm just absolutely. Oh my god, I'm absolutely shocked. I'm absolutely. <laughs> I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start crying. Honestly, I am. Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't make it onto the. I, I couldn't make it onto the show early this evening. I was so out. So just to explain. So I've been hassling Les for a few days. Um, he was originally. Um, there was a chance he was going to come on live to the show tonight, which was why I was um, not really with it for the past two sections of the show because I was checking <laughs> my phone. But, uh, yeah, um, Les, Lee, um, Les, you're the reason why Lee supports Newcastle. So I'll disappear for a short while and you can have your own little interview with Sir Les. Enjoy. I don't even know where to start, Les. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I got into football and I was like, I was really young and my um, both my parents suffer from mental health issues and I was passed around as a kid. And um, oh, right. and I was like, football was like the first, like Newcastle United was like a distraction, a welcome distraction for that. And like, you were like my first hero. It wasn't Alan Shearer. It wasn't Andy Cole. It was Les Ferdinand when he signed. And I always, wow. always remember that like when you were, when you were stood up with Keegan on the steps and all of that. And I always remember, I always remember a fashion shoot that you, Shaka, David, and Warren done. That's right. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gallagher in, wasn't it? Oh well, you know, David and I like to think he's all that, but I didn't I didn't think you weren't you weren't you voted like best man of ninety six oh, or ninety five? Yeah, best dressed man, ninety six, ninety five, ninety six, yeah. But that was yeah, before yeah. Janola came into town. Oh well he's got a he's got a rock the board, <laughs> yeah. hasn't he? But, I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely gobsmacked how Sam's pulled that off. I'm, I didn't even know what I'd say to Les. I really don't. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely loved you. Um, nice as a kid, one, mate. Even when Alan came as well, it was like, it was always Les, Sir Les, because, like I say, I had a horrible childhood growing up and all that, and you were like my first hero. And I kind of yeah. get over how the lads have pulled that up. Like, that's, that's I'm shocked. I really am. Absolutely uh, shocked. Uh, how are things now, mate? You know, with your parents and stuff like that. If you don't oh yeah, so it's all it's all good now and all that. But when I was a kid, it was like a horrible time. And obviously, I'm Newcastle obsessed and what we do. And we've interviewed a lot of ex players and journalists like Henry Winter and so on of late. But um, this uh, that tops it for me. Like I don't know how they <laughs> how, how they've done it and all that. And, I don't know how to say less. Yeah. <laughs> well, you tell me how, how how things are going now and, wow. and, and what you guys are hoping to see. Because is this takeover done and dusted, or is it there's still I'm, I'm understanding that the Premier League is starting to stick their roar into the to water as well, and so there might be a few problems along the line there. I think what's more important, and you'll probably say that the same less is get Mike Ashley out of the club for us to to 
to progress. That's mm. what I would like to say. Even if I had someone who was like Mike Ashley but interacted with the fans a lot more, yeah. I think I would take yeah. that. I think you go back to your day when you had Sir John, he would tell the fans, he would, you know, you had Keegan the famously on the steps why he got rid of Andy Cole and brought in Keith Gillespie ready for you in the summer mm. and all of that. It's just that small interaction that I miss personally as a fan growing up. And we've been starved. And I'm, we're not asking for Champions League nights and Tino Asprey hat ricks and all of that. Mm. I think what we lack is hope. I think that's yeah. what every Newcastle fan just wants that. Look, we're not asking to be in the Champions League. Can we have a bit of hope? Can we have that back? That's what I would like to say. And, and the takeover, if it happens, fantastic. If, if it does happen, I know there's a lot of stick with the Saudis and the human rights and all of that. But mm. we'll worry about that later. I think getting our club back and our, our identity back is like like yourself, get legends back, getting your Shea Givens back, getting yourself back, getting Warren back over the state, welcome back the legends back to the club to come back into the Newcastle night and represent us. Because at the end of the day, we've got no one. And even Alan won't, yeah. co- Alan won't touch the club at the moment because of the hierarchy. And I would like to say all that. That would be a, a dream one day. Yeah, that's sad that, you know, you, you got no former players back identifying with the club. It's... It's such a massive club and such a, and it's always been as big as it was. It was always a homely place, uh, and everyone was in, interconnected. You know, I mean, everyone loved the club, and to not have any of your legends back there now um, supporting the club in the way that it needs to support it and giving it the support is, is difficult. And I, I know the the, the Mike Ashley situation. It, it's never really been a match made in heaven. Um, you know, as much as money as he's put into the club, it's. You know, it's never it's never been um, a situation where everybody's happy, and you you've actually got to a stage now where the the, the camel back is broken, and you, you can't like need a change. You know what I mean? And hopefully, it's a change that will happen soon, and and, and everybody can come out of it at the other end and and look forward. Well, fingers crossed. How are you liking the down mm. QPR? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a tough few years. Um, I, I feel like we've got the right manager in place now. Um, he understands what we're trying to do and. Um, and where we're going, and you know, I've said that about all the managers that we've had, but uh, <laughs> um, unfortunately, it's not it's not quite worked out. But I think um, with the changes that we made last season, um, you know, a lot of the old players going, and you know, kind of like a new squad. He's done really, really well with with the, the new players that have come in, and you know, we've now got a few assets at the football club rather than you know people sort of like earning money and then leaving, and there's, there's you know, you've got to replace them and. There's no money coming in to replace them, so you're trying to do it a bit more holistically. Um, yeah, it's been a tough few years, but um, we're now seeing some light at the end of the time. And can we pinch that young star, Eze? Can we get him at Tyneside? Yeah, if you pay enough money for him, you can get him. Oh, I'll, 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 I'll be maybe, giving maybe a glaring the report. Happens, then. Yeah, yeah, I'll be giving him a glaring report in terms of what it's like up there. And, <laughs> uh, it's a great place to go and play football, but so. Uh, as long as you lock match our asking price, yeah, you can have it. No problem. Not anytime soon, but maybe if this takeover happens, because he looks a talent mind. Yeah, he is. He is. And, you know, I, I, I kind of like best. People have been asking me about him and even the club and said, you know, uh, lots of people talking about him. And, and I've said probably in the, in, in the top best six players that I've, I, I've seen, he'd be in the top six easily in terms of his ability to control and pass the ball. Um, I think the rest of it will come. Um, he's still got he's, he's still got bags of energy, and he's got to know how to use that energy and and and, and how to um, what's the word? In terms of using his energy in the right areas, and how he's going to be effective using his energy in the right areas, and um, he's got so much more to come um, that he, he will be a superstar if he if he keeps his head on and and goes to the right place. I still can't believe I'm talking to Les Ferdinand. It's not. It's not. <laughs> not it's not real. This isn't. This isn't yeah. real for me. I mean, we've got some fantastic guests the last few months, but not not so Les. You know what I mean? What, what yeah. do you think? Of what Steve Bruce has done so far? Yeah, you know, I've, 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 I've got to be honest. I've, I was a little disappointed with the reaction that he, he got going to the club. I, I know. Listen, I know you're captain of Man United, and they picked just to the title and all that, but. You know, the, the, the supporters have always cried out for someone who knows and understands the the area and the environment and what Newcastle United means. And Steve certainly does that. He certainly understands all that. And uh, to when he came in, I thought, oh, at least they'll have someone that they know that they can associate with in terms of knowing what the, the area is like, what it's needed and what's needed yeah. at the club. Uh, and I think he's done, if you, if you look at what he's done, he's done, I think he's done a fantastic job so far. 
in, in trying circumstances. So given a bit of money and a bit of backing, um, you know, I've got no doubt that he'll do a really, really good, you know, an even better job here. I was going to say do a really, really good job. I think he's doing a really, really good job yeah. now. I think you'll do an even better job with the right backing and the right money. You know, people criticise some of the, the summer signings, which probably had nothing to do with them, most of the majority of them. Because I know some of your players were already signed before, or the, the, the deal was already done before he came there. So he's just had to work with what he's got. I think he's allowed. he's been allowed to bring one or two in. But... You know, I think he, he's been judged really harshly, but doing a very, very good job. Yeah, we all know he's not a Rafa Benitez. His heart's in the right place and all of yeah. that. Um, I can't believe I've got Les Ferdinand. I'm speaking to him. <laughs> one, of, one, of, one of our mates, Clinton Ford, who's, um, who actually filmed you a few weeks ago, he'll be absolutely good that I've got... I'm speaking to Les Ferdinand <laughs> yeah. right now because he was your first hero. He's from, oh, like, right, um, okay. he was from West London. He's the reason why... He supports Newcastle. Obviously, he doesn't have the Geordie accent. Of course not. He's all like, I'll have gays and all of that. But, um, <laughs> I don't know how they've pulled it up. Sam, you can come back in if you want. That was mental. Ask him about, did he hate Alan Shearer for taking the number nine off you? I can't, ask, I Les, I can't ask Les that. <laughs> yeah, you can. You know I mean? I've been asked it loads and loads of times. Listen, if I was, if I was in Alan's shoes and I was coming back to my boyhood club and you know, he idolised Gallagher and, and all the other people that had worn the number nine, and it, it was his dream as a as a young boy to wear the number nine for the Newcastle United. I would I would have asked the same question. Uh, for me, it was down to the manager. If the manager had said to him, "Well, listen, now I'm signing you. Les has done well in the shirt last year. I can't go and ask him for it," then nothing would have been. You know, Alan, I think Alan still would have come to the club. I had no um, like I said, I had no uh, I had no arguments, no no. Uh, disappointment with the fact that Alan asked for the shirt. I mean, like I said, I would have probably done the same thing put in his, in his position. I've got a good question. It's just giving me in mind there. You and 86 squad. I've seen Ian Wright talking about this on Match of the Day over the weekend. Uh, Venables took yourself and Fowler, but never played you. You've just had, mm. you've just came off, you were player of the year, you've just banged in 29 goals and you never kicked a ball in that tournament. Does that, does that grieve at you a little bit? Yeah, it agrees, it agrees with me a hell of a lot. I don't think it would have happened in any other European country in, 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 um, that we know. Uh, most of the times, you get players who have had a really good season, but have been no have been nowhere near the, the national team. But because they've had such a good season, they go into the into into the squad and then and then get you know selected and end up being like you, you look back to Rossi and. Scalacci and people like that who no one had heard of before the actual competition started. Uh, but they had such good seasons that in the end um, they, they became heroes. And coming off the back of having probably the best season of my career um, and not kicking a ball. I mean, even if I didn't start and I understood, you know, Alan was uh, Terry Venables' number one choice. But to not come off the bench and not kick a ball, yeah, that, that great's really bad with me. And, you know, I, I put it down to... I suppose I had a clash of personalities with Terry Venables. We didn't see eye to eye, and and I always said to him, "Look, you're the you're the you're the England manager. If you don't if you don't rate me as a player, all you got to do is tell the public, and you would have no reason to have me there. Just tell him you don't rate me as a, as an international player. And I think you, as you're the England manager, people will understand that. I don't want, I don't understand why he's got me and not not playing. Me. What's your favourite Newcastle goal? I always I always say to people the first goal I scored. Um, listen, I knew I kind of like knew what the number nine meant to, to the Geordie supporters, and you know I I, I kind of played against Newcastle on a few occasions, and you know savoured the atmosphere on a few occasions. But scoring that first goal, um, I kind of like realised at that moment what it actually meant, um, because I think every single person in the stadium was willing me to score on that day, and they they virtually lifted the roof off all the all the stands um, when I scored that goal. And I can't kind of like realised, oh, hang on a second. You know, I mean, as much as I'd known about it, but I was actually scoring that goal. So that was one that always stands out for me. And then um, in my first season, away to Everton, the one where I picked up just inside the, the halfway line, it was only because I'd had a conversation with Kevin Keegan um, before we got to the game. And he said to me, um, you know, when you was at QPR and I used to come and watch you at QPR, he said, that time you'd pick the ball up on the halfway line and you'd run with it. You'd beat it through and you'd score, or you'd have an effort. Of like, he said, why don't you do that anymore? And I said, well, the, the reason being is because every time the ball comes up to me, I feel like I've got four or five options. And if I take the option of running with it and losing it, I, I'll, I'll probably feel guilty in the fact that I had two or three options to, to pass the ball to. They went, well, I, I actually like that part about your game. So when you get the opportunity, 
do it again. So I went, okay. And then he always said to me, he said, Everton have been a bit of a, a bogey side for us since I've been manager here. So he said, so you might not happen today, but, um, you know, going forward. So you know, I said, but I hardly ever lose against Everton. And I remember the ball coming in to me, turning and, and shooting. And then my first reaction was to look at Kerry Keegan. And as I was going back to the halfway line, I kind of looked across at him and I went like that. He <laughs> said, and so um, we ended up winning that game. And I said, I told you I don't normally lose at Goodison Park. So um, that, that one stands out as well. It's great when that. I remember reading a story when you were in Turkey and you were either making your debut or, or it was like a sacrifice of a goat or something. Is that right? Yeah, it was, it was just a, it was a ritual that um, used to happen every at the start of every season. So basically what they used to do was they used to have their very first training session with all the players in front of the supporters and they'd do it at the stadium. So it'd just be like uh, saying, right, it was, a, it was a real carnival atmosphere and it'd be just like saying, right, listen, chaps, first day's first day of pre-season, we're doing it at St James's Park and all sports can come in and watch the, 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 the training sessions. Now the stadium would be full and that's exactly what happened. There's 35,000 people there for the first day's training session. And um, I always remember coming out, there was two, two things that happened. They, they sacrificed a the lamb. You don't actually see it, but the lamb's lying on the side there and they, they make the sign of the cross on your forehead on your boots. Um, and then uh, they give doves to players that they think are going to be key players for them. So I think it was the, the, there was four signings, four new signings. And they gave each of us a dove and I was the last one out. They gave me this dove and I threw it up in the air to let it go. And it kind of like, because its wings had been kept together for so long, it just came back down on the ground and went bang on, on the ground. And everything in the stadium went silent. And I thought to myself, oh, gee, I only just arrived there. And it looks like I'll be going back home in five minutes. Um, so I picked it up, threw it up even higher and did the same thing. It just came all the way down and went bang. And like I said, it was just, everything was silent. And this little old fella came on and he pulled the wings apart, give it to me again and threw it. And then it, it flew away and then everyone went crazy. Like, you know what I mean? So um, I thought, okay, I can last a, I might last a week or so. Yeah, Any plans to introduce that at QPR? <laughs> So now, um, <laughs> human rights would probably, animal rights probably wouldn't allow us to do that. But um, yeah, no, I was saying, I, I'm not, I, I, listen, I don't even know if they do it anymore, but back in the day, it was it was all part of um, what they did. And uh, like I said, I just immersed myself in what they was doing when I went there. I didn't go, oh, we don't do this in London, we don't do that. I just, just got on with it. I'd be petrified if that happened to me. I, you must have been thinking, what the, is going on around here? What is happening yeah. here? I did. Um, but like I said, I was, I was so blown away by the actual fact that there were so many people. At the, you, you would have thought that we was going to uh, to play a game against our local rival, rivals. That's how busy the stadium was. And like I said, it was a can't. And I was just blown away by um, the, the, the fact that there was all these supporters there. And it was my first day. It was the first time I was meeting the players. And I was going on the train on the, on the pitch to do a session with them. So it was, um, there, was, there was so much going on in my mind. You know, that was just a... You know, it was it was probably a welcome distraction. We had Warren on a few weeks ago, and he was throwing your name out to be director of football at Newcastle. Do you fancy it? <laughs> I mean, I've, I've got a job to finish here at QBR, and I said, you know, when I when I went here, I, I said it, I wasn't going to QBR and trying to cut my cloth for cut my teeth in, in the role. I, I've gone here to do a job, and the job's not completed yet. Um, you know, I love Newcastle United; I had a great time there. But I want to finish what I'm doing at QPR before I look at doing anything else. And you know, at some stage, I'd love to be back involved in the club if it, if, it, if 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 the opportunity came about. But um, at this moment, like I said, I'm I'm still very much committed to what I'm doing at QPR. Mint. <laughs> I've just got a quick question. When I interviewed Henry Winter the other week, he um, mentioned Alan Shearer's testimonial and the evening that followed. Can you remember getting home that night and how long were you on the decks for? Jeez, uh, I, <laughs> I can't remember. I don't, I'm just, I'm trying to. I remember Steve Arthur's testimony. Ellen's was against Celtic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Didn't you score the first goal for Newcastle for us in that game? Yeah, and I got a penalty as well, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. very yeah. soft. Yeah. I, didn't get stage. I thought it was like I thought it was quite harsh. I'm surprised the fella stayed on the pitch after, after the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did I do? I, do you know what? I can't even remember. I can't even remember what I did after that. Put that down to all the heading of the ball and stuff like that. I can't remember how long I stayed on the deck. Yeah. Henry Winter said you were DJing in Shearer's bar long into the night. <laughs> uh, uh, 
Oh, perhaps I was. I just can't remember it too clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I always fancy myself as a bit of a DJ, I've got to be honest. Yeah, you're never too young to start. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, Lee, any further questions or have uh, we suitably surprised you? No, I'm very, very surprised. I'm shocked. And Les Ferdinand, man, I can't get out of that. Can't get out of that. Maybe one day, Les, <laughs> we'll have a, like, a serious interview one day. But um, yeah, I'm I'd love that. thank you very much, Les, as well, for coming on as well. Pleasure, mate, and it's good to speak to you. And um, thanks for all the support over the years, mate. And um, I wish all of you well. Keep safe, and um, we'll be in touch. And like you said, one day I'll come on and do uh, do your uh, your uh, show for you. Mental, that like absolutely mental. Uh, two things there uh, revealed. First of all, I've never done it on YouTube. That both my parents suffer from mental health issues. And secondly, I know I started crying again on YouTube. I mean, I've done that with Spurs away because that was just a beautiful day. And I kind of, I, I kind of thank Sam and Rob. You know, that was a really nice surprise. Rob obviously had his number and passed it on to Sam, and Sam grafted and got me back in a good way because I set him up for Matt Ritchie. And also, congratulations, Sam has become a dad for the second time a day or two ago as well. So he's um, he's had a good start of um, the last week, hasn't he? Surprising me, and then the birth of his little one. But I also want to thank, and I've been banging the drum with um, praisal and everything as well, and it was really nice to see Paul, Owen and Johnny say some nice stuff to me as well. It was really, really nice. So most of the lads said stuff, so that was brilliant to see. Um, because it is nice, a graft, and people people don't always see me on camera now because we have so many different faces, which is brilliant. But I'm there at it five, six, seven hours every day without fail. Whether it's the website, whether it's Twitter, whether it's editing videos, whether it's uploading a video on the Facebook page, whatever it is, I'm at it every day because I love creating content. I love talking about the two, and it was nice to see the lads say that and give a little recognition back and a bit of reward. It was lovely. It was a nice gesture. I didn't know how to start the video. I was like, I was like that. There's Les Ferdinand, but I he got me back good. Sam, it was really really good, and um, I think the lads enjoyed me uh, my reaction to it. I was like, fucking hell, there's Les Ferdinand. But yeah, it was nice. I really enjoyed that. It was a good feel fact. And well, um, Les said he'll come on. We'll do a proper interview with him. But I had to get that question in about Ezzy. I had to get the director of football question in there because you would have you would have skinned me in the comments. You would have had a go at us, so I had to get that in for you. But um, I hope you like that. That is probably a wrap. I did say that last time, but that is probably a wrap before the interviews because obviously we've now got the whole city friendly. We're going to start looking at Sheffield United, and aye, that was really nice. Once again, thank you, lads. <laughs>